Hi friends, welcome back to episode 2 of the Cookie Nets podcast. My name is Ira and I'm a Nepali expat coming to you from beautiful Sydney, Australia. If it's your first time here, welcome. If it's your second time here, welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on my video and for spending a little bit of your time with me uh, and my crafting journey. Uh, before we get started, I just have a couple of things to say. Um, I was blown away by my reception um, to the first podcast episode. Like I knew that the knitting community is positive and welcoming and supportive, but that was, I was so emotional for weeks. <laughs> that was more than anything I could have ever imagined. So thank you so much to everyone that watched my previous video, subscribed, reached out to me on Ravelry or Instagram or in person and told me that they really enjoyed my content and my makes and it makes me so happy to be a little part of this world so thank you. The other thing I have to say is that in my previous video because I didn't do any notes or anything and I was really nervous I made a couple of mistakes so there's a little error section in my description um, drop down bar. If I do that again it will be down there um, I also try and tag or link any patterns, yarn, any events, anything that I'm mentioning in my podcast. So all of the information will be there. Um, however, if there's something you want to know that's not available, you can reach out to me in the YouTube comments or on my Instagram or on Ravelry. I'm available as Cookie Knits on both Instagram and Ravelry. Um, and please do reach out to me. I will happily try and help you as much as I can. Today, I have a little bit of a vlog style footage that I will put in at the end of the podcast as well. So that's a new thing I'm trying out. It's actually really fun to film for it and um, quite fun to edit it as well. I've already edited it. I was so excited. I edited it first and then I'm filming the podcast. So, okay. Let's get started with my finished objects. My first finished object is the Anchors Summer Tea by Petite Knit. All done. I knit this in Drops Bell, which is an 8-ply DK weight um, sort of summer yarn. Um, it's, I wrote notes today. It's 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. And I'm quite happy with it. Um, I did a couple of modifications, but first I'll pop in a picture of me in the top so you can see. Um, I added a couple of short rows in the back. So the way that the construction of this shirt is you first knit the rib section in um, yoke and then at the bottom here there's some raglan shaping. So in the back part between the raglans I added in three short rows and that has really helped bring the back of the piece up and I feel like it fits really well because of it now. I've also knitted with a smaller ease and a shorter top than recommended as in summer and stuff I usually wear quite a lot of high-waisted shorts so this should go well with that. I'm quite happy with the piece. Um, the yarn's quite alright but if I knit this pattern again I think I would like to try and knit it in a bit more of a silky yarn, um, a lightweight silky yarn because this is quite a dry cotton yarn which is still nice but I would probably find the feel of the other yarn a bit nicer on myself. So that's finished object number one. And then my finished object number two is what I'm wearing. It's my Porporia sweater by Teti Lutsak. She's Teti's Knit Garden on Instagram. She has absolutely amazing patterns. And this is knit in the Newtonen in the color Firstina. Um, it's all done. I'll insert a picture in so you can see how it looks in the full um, format. But I'll also stand up and show you what it looks like. So it has the cables. And my favorite detail of it is this cute little split hem. The only modification I did, the pattern gives you options to knit it in a cropped, a slightly cropped, or a full length version. 
I knit the slightly cropped version, but I did add one extra cable repeat to the back um, hem because I thought I would like a little bit more of a high-low hem. However, I think it was really good I did that because the short rows in this pattern are just in the back of the collar. So in the ribbing that you do up here, and I find that that extra cable repeat is only a little bit longer in the final finished product, probably because my shoulders need a little bit more um, fabric than just the collar for the short rows. So I think adding that really helped because they almost look nice and even now. If I hadn't added that in, I don't think I'd be very happy if my back helm was riding up and my bottom wasn't. Um, and that's just a part of the way my body sits. Um, you know, all of us with our bad postures. <laughs> so the yarn itself, um, blocking did help with the softness, but it's still something that I wear with a turtleneck. It's very light. I think I use about 400 grams for, uh, and it was held double. I still have two plates of this gray and one plate of like a white or light gray left. So I was watching Inga from The Knitting Traditions and she as well when she was holding it double didn't find it the best experience while you're knitting it. But she liked the finished fabric so she's thinking of making one held single with mohair. So I'll wait and see how she goes and if it's good enough for Inga, Lord knows it's good enough for me. So maybe in a year, <laughs> once I've forgotten the <laughs> my annoyance of the process of knitting this piece, um, I might try and hold that and make a sort of gradient, um, sort of light gray to the dark gray uh, with a mohair. That would be quite light and quite warm, so that would be a nice piece to have, but not anytime soon. Quick check of the notes. Okay, moving on to my works in progress. My whips. Um, my first whip is the Orealis sweater by Jennifer Steingas. It's a color work eight ply sweater. I'm got about that much done. So I'm knitting this in the Western Yorkshire Spinners Fleece, which is 100% Jacob's yarn. As well as the Bendigo Bloom in the color Red Ochre that I showed you in my acquisitions last episode. That's what it looks like all wound up. It's so gorgeous and it's so soft. <laughs> I really like the yarn. I've decided to go... Ooh, okay, I'm tangled up. I've decided to go with a roll neck option as this um, color work pattern comes with two options, either for the collar, like a normal ripped collar, or for roll neck. Um, the Western Yorkshire Spinners yarn is quite rustic to the feel. And I was naughty. I did not wash my gauge swatch. So I don't know how softer it'll get. So just to be safe, I decided to go with the roll neck so it sits a bit lower down on my neck where hopefully I'm not too sensitive. The issue I was having with I was having some tension issues right up on the top here because I realized that the the Jacobs yarn has a really good elasticity so it would spring back and my floats were tighter in that one and my bloom is not as elastic and so I find that my bloom stitches are all a bit lumpy bumpy I think that's the scientific term <laughs> up on the top. However, I think I figured it out on the bottom. So I just need to loosen up my main color floats while tightening up my bloom floats and that's going pretty well. I'm just starting to get into the orange section. 
like just up here. That's very exciting. I can't wait to see how all the colors turn out. Uh, so that's my first work in progress. My second work in progress is the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit. It's knit in a four ply fingering weight pattern. And this was in my previous podcast as a whip as well. So I've done the bottom bind off, which is an I cord bind off. It's still rolling up a little bit, but I've been told that it'll probably block out quite well. I'm done with one sleeve, same with an I cord bind off. And I'm on sleeve number two. And I still need to pick up stitches around the V neck and then do an I cord bind off again. I'm knitting this in the, it's a long name, I wrote it down. Uh, four ply undyed sock base with multicolored nets. The white base is 85% merino superwash and the rest of it is the nets. And I got it from Fiber Arts Shed. Um, and it's an undyed base that I've realized is available in different places. And indie dyers usually use it for their rainbow confetti fleck yarns. In fact, before I bought this, on the same day that I saw this in person at a market and I didn't get it, um, I bought another yarn by Jokomomo Textiles. And this is the Deneagle fingering, which is again 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Deneagle Nap as the same yardage. From what I can see, it looks like a very similar, if not the same yarn. So if you're looking for a yarn like this and you're in Australia and you don't want just the cream base, Jokomomo Textiles has them in lots of different colors. And this color is ocean green. Really pretty. So I'm really close to finishing this. However, I'm going through this weird thing where I refuse to try on my whips. Like, I don't know what that is about. I tried it on when it was about here. And I was like, okay, it, it covers stuff. <laughs> And then I just didn't try it on. I just eyeballed it and, and bound off. And I actually tried it off like halfway through the first, tried it on halfway through the first sleeve. And now I'm not sure about the length. I kind of want it a touch longer. So I think I'll block it first and see how it goes. Um, try it on with a few of my outfits because I find it really hard to gauge what length I want shirts. I feel like I should have them longer to cover stuff up. <laughs> However, it doesn't, like, too long looks kind of frumpy on me, so I'll block it first because I really don't want to undo this eye cord bind off unless I have to and see how it goes and if I can just stretch it a little bit during blocking and it's long enough and looks good with all my summer outfits. Okay, that's fine. No unwinding for me, please. No undoing an eye cord. So that's my second whip, the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit. And my third whip is going to be a massive, massive project. It's called the Scrat Stillet by Natalia Sinelschinova, Chikova? Sinelschikova. I know for a fact that that's not how it's pronounced because I'm pronouncing it and the chances are it's very wrong. I will link it down below. She's also uh, known as Fiber Creative and this is a pattern for wool folk. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous, full, like twisted stitches, geometric, cowl neck, oversized pattern and I'm knitting it for my husband. My husband's actually my favorite person to knit for. In my very unbiased opinion, as his wife and a knitter, I think he looks the best in my hand knits. <laughs> uh, I feel like he looks so good in them, he almost makes me look like a better knitter than I am, which is you know, not a bad problem to have. However, he mostly just wears sweaters to work, 
during winter so I have knit him one sweater each year since I picked up knitting again since 2019 so he has three this is the first sweater that he has said that he will wear instead of his hoodies which is a Christmas miracle in itself so of course I got really excited he even chose the color he bought the yarn and then I printed the pattern and it was just so much writing so I'm a chart person for sure but of course like I can go off of instructions but this was instructions like knit na 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 these many times then these many times then na 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 like every single row had a huge paragraph and I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god so I was sort of avoiding starting this pattern and then I started feeling guilty because he had already bought the yarn and it had been sitting around and it's 25 balls of yarn. I have about 1800 meters. Let me show you where I'm at before I keep going on and on about the pattern. So I've started it. It's a bottom up construction and I'm knitting it in Drops Nepal in the color medium gray. Drops Nepal is about 65% wool and 35% alpaca. So that's where I'm at. So that's the front chest pattern and it's got a little split hem with the back hem hem longer and the back just has the twisted one by one rib going up I'm really not showing this nicely it's like just a bit too big for the cable I'm on so I'm scared that I'm gonna drop it all and then I'm gonna cry myself to death um, yep so that's the back and it has little sections of reverse stock in it on each side to further make it pop out. Once I started knitting on it, actually, it's a very intuitive pattern. So I actually didn't even really need the instructions anymore, which is good because I was stressed about it. And -uh, it's fine. It's very... It's very instinctive. The center panel is a four row panel in which row two and row four, you don't even need the instructions for. Row two, you're just knitting the knits and purling the pearls and row four, it goes back into a knit one, purl one, twisted rib. So it's just row one and row three that you're actually twisting the stitches in a certain way. And because it's such a geometric pattern, it's been fine. I'm very, very shocked at myself. This was also the first time I did a one by one tubular long tail cast on. I've been avoiding this in all, all my pattern, all my knits. I just normally do it all German or all Norwegian twisted cast on. No. Yes. All German twisted cast on or the Norwegian twisted cast on, I think. Or is it the other way around? Is it the old Norwegian cast on and the German twisted cast on? That sounds right. One of those. Someone's Norwegian, someone's German, and someone's old. Um, so I'd always been doing that because I don't mind the look of it and it's nice and stretchy. I do, however, do the sewn Italian bind off on all my one by ones. I really like the, the finishing. I find the sewing part really meditative. A lot of people hate sewn binds off, but I will go out of my way to do it if I can. I am so pleased with the cast on. It was so straightforward. I don't know why I freak myself out about things and then when I try them, I'm like, oh, they're fine. Like, I feel so stupid sometimes <laughs> when I do that. Um, I was originally going to make a size 3 that has 10 inches of positive ease. The model in the picture is wearing 11 inches of positive ease, which is a lot of positive ease. However, I didn't wash my gauge swatch again and this is for a reason I've knit a couple of garments in this yarn and I know that it relaxes it's got alpaca in it as well and it tends to sort of yeah loosen up after blocking as well as after a little bit of wear and this being such a big garment I knew that the weight of it would probably stretch it a bit more so I actually sized down to a size that gives about seven inches of positive ease which gives me a little bit more leeway with it relaxing than me knitting 10 inches and then say it relaxes, you know, a couple of inches and then all of a sudden it's swimming on him. I'm really pleased with this knit. 
Doing a lot of twisted stitches irritates my elbow, um, so I'm trying not to knit on it too often. It's quite, not too often, for not too long, but it's quite a fun knit. And the pattern is a unisex pattern, and I really like the female version with the crew neck as well. So once I knit this up, I'm going to try it on, and if I really like how it looks on me, maybe I'll make one for myself too, and we'll be matching. Probably in a different color though. I feel like this would really pop in like a light, like a white or a light gray or like a pastel purple. Is that weird? I, I, I really like this pattern. Highly recommend it. It's not as scary as it looks. And now to my final whip. I completely spaced out and didn't show you guys this at all last time. It is a non-knitting whip. It's actually cross stitch. Um, my history with cross stitch, I did a little bit here and there, like really small little things to like gift in tiny little frames, but nothing too complicated at all. And then in 2020, a couple of my friends and me would do paint dates. So every couple of weekends during lockdown 1.0 in Australia, we had a lockdown 2.0 in 2021, but lockdown 1.0 in Sydney. Um, I was doing these paint dates and both my friends are really good artists and I just don't have the skills to paint But I really enjoyed I was trying to do a bit of Klimt because he's my favorite artist And I really enjoyed the process of you know looking at his artwork and I really wanted to sort of Have one that I had recreated in my house rather than having a print and I know I don't have the skills to paint it and I was like, hang on, I wonder if there's any embroidery or cross stitch patterns available in like a lot of detail um, that could tell me how I could do this painting. And I found an Etsy shop called The Art of the Stitch, I'll link it down below. And I think it's a lady in Malaysia. She sells kits as well as patterns. But what I find really amazing about her store is she does a lot of classic artworks in different sizes. So you can do the same artwork in a bookmark, in a small piece, or in a massive piece like the one that I chose to do. So my cross stitch is a uh, when I'm not knitting type project. So it's something that I don't put a time limit on. It gives me a really good break if I'm feeling like I can't knit or if I've knit a lot in the day and my brain power is sort of gone and I find that the cross stitch works well so that I'm still feeling like I'm making productive use of my time but I'm not actually doing the knitting which is what I don't, don't want to do <laughs> at those times. So I started my first cross stitch piece last year and it took me a whole year so this is The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. I've made this in 18 count Ida and it used 40 colors and the final piece is 14 by 14 inches. So this is a finished object but I just wanted to show you what the finished one looks like. It's been folded up for a long time. <laughs> Hopefully you can still see. And the level of detail in this pattern like from the shop is amazing like look at it I can't believe I made this firstly but compared to how I feel about knitting I feel like cross stitch is definitely more about perseverance and patience you just have to do it the techniques are not to varied like in knitting there'll be you know different patterns have different types of techniques and I find for um I find cross stitch not as technique heavy because it's just cross stitch and I don't know much about it so if any cross stitches are like what are you talking about you're not using this and this and this technique I'm sorry it's just a relaxing activity for me so this is last year's I have a frame for it, but I haven't gotten around to framing it yet because I'm very, very nervous about that. And I'm also avoiding it, just like everything else. And then when I actually do it, it'll probably be quite straightforward. And then I'll feel stupid again and the cycle continues. This year, I'm doing The Starry Night by Van Gogh. This one is also on 18 count Ida. And it also uses 40 colors. However, the finished piece is 11 by 14 inches. And that's where I am. 
I like to put in these grid lines and I'm done with over a quarter easily I would say because the red thread in the middle is the center line it's so much harder than last year's because these swirls are so complicated I felt like I was going cross-eyed in the middle when I was counting, but oh, look at it. It's so gorgeous. It's so worth it. So that's my last whip and my only non-knitting whip today. I'll probably only show this once I make a bit of progress, um, so it won't be something that's going to be on every single time. But I love working on my cross-stitch as well. to my acquisitions I was doing so well and then just last week I managed to acquire this week today is Saturday Sunday today is Sunday just this week I managed to acquire a few things so I'll show you my first acquisition is this skein of yarn by makers Moran so this is an exclusive colorway for color, Colorways Collective called Poseidon. And this is a 75% Superwash BFL and 25% Nylon. And it's 425 meters, 200 grams. So it's a lighter fingering weight. Um, colorways Collective is run by my friend Patricia, who's also on YouTube as Serial Sewist. And she runs Colorways Collective I will link her website down below because she'll explain it a lot better than I can. But it's basically providing a platform to showcase indie makers, um, dyers, uh, bag makers, makers of all kinds associated with the fiber community. And they, use, they make an exclusive colorway. And I loved this color. She had a sale on the weekend, so I got two of them. I think I'm going to make a top of some kind. It's so rich. Oh, love it. That's my first acquisition. My second acquisition <laughs> is a whole cone of whole super, star, super soft. I got it off of uh, my friend Jane. <laughs> she was having a D stash. Jane lives in the same suburb as me and was one of the podcasters I used to watch and now we're actually personal friends. She's Mindful Making on YouTube and I will link her channel down below as well. So this is the whole Super Soft in the Colorway Mariner. I don't have anything particular in mind for it at the moment but I'll probably make something for myself. Because I really like the Super Soft yarn. My third acquisition is from 111 Windmills. Um, Lisa runs 111 Windmills and she's a lovely, lovely person. We actually spent the day yesterday together. Yesterday was Knit in Public Day and she came down to our knit group for it and then we, a few of us ended up, ended up going out for a few drinks and Lisa is lovely. She, I met her first in Dungog. Um, she was showing at the market and I really wanted to get a couple of her pieces. However, like I mentioned last time, I didn't go for the market. So I just messaged Lisa and I was like, Hi Lisa, are you going to be around? If so, can I have a look at some of your earrings? And she very lovingly brought them up with her in her car when she came up on Sunday. And I went rifling through her car boot looking very, very sus. I was like, it's okay folks, I'm just buying earrings. <laughs> so I got two earrings from Lisa last time. So these are her marble acrylic skein earrings. They're so cute, they're little skeins. And they're in a blue and gold color. I don't know if you can see that. They're so cute. And the other earrings I got are the flora earrings. So they're little gum nuts with green yarn coming out of it. It is so cute. I've already worn this so many times. So after getting these from Lisa, when I saw that she was doing an advent calendar with notions, I was so excited. I 
I have never got any advent of any kind before, mostly because they tend to be more yarn and sock yarn and I just don't need that much sock yarn in my life. I don't knit socks. I already have a few skeins of sock yarn that I don't know at all. Like I'm confused and lost as to A, why I bought them and B, what I'm going to do with them. But a Notions advent calendar would be great. I actually don't tend to buy any fancy Notions or any fun, you know, progress keepers, stitch markers, anything like that. So. When Lisa announced it, I was on it. She sold out in an hour, no, in 40 minutes. And I think I was there like three minutes past when the shop opened, buying the advent calendar. However, I know she's having a restock tomorrow. And I think it's the last restock of her advent calendars. It's so tomorrow's Monday, depending on when I post this, it'll either be tomorrow or if I post it tomorrow, it'll be today. So keep an eye out for Lisa. Otherwise, just look at a few of her makes. She does really amazing, all handmade. Made, what the heck is a handmade? A handmade <laughs> yarn based goodies. She's and she's a wonderful person to support. So that's my final acquisition, the advent box that I'll get in December. <laughs> And the final segment is a little bit of knit life, the knit life chat. I went to a couple of knit nights at Mel, who's Three Cat Yarn Studio. Uh, for anyone based around in Sydney, once in a while, every few weeks, she does a Thursday night knit night and tickets will be available on her website, which I will link below. I've gone to two of them. I meet lovely people every time and it's really, really fun. Um, I also went to Skane Sisters for the first time this week. Skane Sisters is a really nice yarn shop based in Dulwich Hill in Sydney. And I thought I'm going to get some footage. So I went with my friend Vera, who's an up and coming designer. She, you will see in the footage coming up, is wearing one of her patterns called the Matchstick Cardigan, which is this really cool, she loves textures and cables and I would highly recommend checking her out. Um, I have one of her projects coming up. Um, so we went down to Skin Sisters, which is run by Deb and Janine, and Deb was there today, and she was speaking to us, she was talking to me about, um, what I was wearing, and I asked if I could, you know, just film a little bit in the studio, in the shop, I didn't want to just go in and start filming with a big camera without checking, and I mentioned it was for a podcast, they were so lovely, the staff took down my name, <laughs> took down the name of the podcast, Deb was talking to Vera about her beautiful pattern, and then a couple of days, couple of days later, the newsletter goes out, and Vera and I are in it with our patterns at podcast linked. Oh, I love our fiber community. That is so supportive. Um, so there's a little bit of footage of their lovely yard shop coming up. Um, they host a lot of really nice brands. They have Spin Cycle, they have Mad Tosh, they have Magpie Fibers, they have Julie Asselin, they have Hedgehog Fibers, they have exclusive colors from Hedgehog Fibers for their shop. They have Fiber Spates, they have Katya, they have con like a lot, a lot of beautiful, amazing yarn. I actually have two summer shirt quantities of yarn from their shop and they'll be coming up in future projects so keep an eye out for that and then yesterday it was knit in public day and we actually had a really good decent like big sized meetup um, in the suburb where I live in Hornsby we have a little knit group that sort of meets up every few Sundays anyways but of course we had to meet up for knit in public day and quite a lot of people came up for it from other areas um, Jane was there um, Kat was there. Kat is Oliphant and Kat on YouTube and she's a designer and tech editor and amazing, amazing friend. I will link her channel down below as well if anyone's looking for more Aussie content. And we had Mel from 3 Cat Yards. Lisa was there from 101 Windmills and it was a really fun, fun um, meet up. I, I always come home feeling so warm and fuzzy after any knitting meets because it's just such a happy and relaxing and joyous occasion. So there's a little bit of pictures coming up from that as well in the vlog. So that's all of my content for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me through another podcast. Um, leave any comments, any feedback, and I hope I'll see you for the next one. Bye!